All right. This is New World starting areas, pros and cons. Making the informed choice. This is where we're going to figure out where the hell we can start playing from. Fuck. There we go. How's it going, everyone? My name is Divine, and today we're going to... Yo, Divine, what up, dude? Your voice sounds great, man. You keep doing what you're doing, bro. I'm going to put this up a little bit so everyone can hear. I'm going to be taking a look at four different choices for your starting cities and going over Ooh. the details of these cities and their surrounding areas. I am making this guide to let you know my personal feelings about the starting cities. So if you already know from previous tests and what city you want to start in, then I... Not going to lie. Who the fuck put my face in this fucking game, dude? Everyone see this? Who put my fucking face in this game, dude? That's nuts. That's crazy. I say go for it, but if you want to know just a little bit more maybe about other areas first, then this video is for you. It's really meant to just help others who don't possibly know about all the different city features that are out there and just to make the most informed choice when the game comes out. Now, there is four different... No, no, the, the one, the one, the one that's here, the one, the one that's in pink. Oh, he just disappeared. Look at this, this one right here. This one right here, except he's got a big friggin' bald head on him. This one right here. That looks pretty, that looks pretty similar, man. I'm just saying. Whew. If you want to know just a little bit more maybe about other areas first, then this video is for you. Okay. It's really meant to just help others who don't possibly know about all the different city features that are out there and just to make the most informed choice when the game comes out. Shabby head, you look exactly the same. starting zones which include First Light, Monarch's Bluff, okay. Everfall, okay. and Windsward. And each really do have their own pros and cons for them. So starting up first, we're going to go with First Light, which is the southernmost city on the map. Bro, we can live now, on a boat. let's talk about a few features that this city does have. We can live offer. on a boat. I'm in. One of the first features you're going to notice is Sherry the Cow, where you can actually get milk. Then there is also two wells where you can obtain nice. any honey jar that all can be collected once okay. an hour. So that's just good to know. Um, so if you're in between quests and it's been about an hour, make sure you guys collect all these uh, different supplies that you can get from this town. Mm -hmm. Continuing right on, we have the faction supply cart, which will actually give you food, but can only be collected once a day. And you also need to make sure that your faction owns the territory so that you can gather oh, this okay, in right. the town. Right. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw up the map here and we can see the layout of the city. Now, one thing to note is that all the crafting stations are kind of spaced out apart. Um, I don't think it's nearly as bad as Monarch's Bluff, but right. it's not as good as places like Everfall in Windsward. Yeah, everything's kind of so another the, 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 the big problem. The big problem with, with a layout like this, with a layout like this is uh, you're you haven't got direct access, you haven't got direct lines to everything. So like if you're coming over here and everything's kind of scattered, like this is why like circular cities make sense. Yeah. This is why, like cities like Stormwind and shit make sense in WoW because uh, it's easy to get to everything. You basically go either out to the sides or into the middle. But if you were to go from one side to the other, you go across the middle or you go around, around the outside ever fall in Windsward, unfortunately. So another great feature about this town is going to be that you have four options. Bro, the fact that this is a boat in here is so fucking I'm sick. throw up a housing buying guide here and you can see all the different tiers. So that tier Ooh. one, two, three, and four. Now I'm going to buy a house. The full prices. So if you buy your house for the first time, these prices will be cut in half. Hmm. Um, so just be aware of that. But I'll leave that up there for just a second so you guys can see where all these tier one houses are. And those would be 2500 gold question these houses now we'll moving see. on we can see we'll that see. we're we'll also see. We'll going we'll to see. be right near the coast which means mm -hmm. for fishing we have a great advantage of doing saltwater fishing so if you guys are really into the fishing scene get you some can go snapper much not too Get far out from happening. the major city and just start fishing along the beach now, this city might seem kind of great initially, but there mm. are some cons present. And the first one from this map that we can see is that it's going to be the furthest away from its starting beach yeah. area. Now, that's going to be that watchtower quest, um, especially if you're trying to do it quickly. 
um, making that run all the way to the town is kind of crazy. Now, it is also going to be the okay. furthest away for the main quest line as well. And it ends up taking, I think, about 20 minutes longer than Jesus. any of the other cities uh, for a starting area to do the main, main quest itself. And in my opinion, this is barely any time in the game, but no. I wanted to note this here for those people that do like to rush the quest as fast as possible. Now, the last con I want to mention right now is that this town will likely be the worst starting area for <laughs> trading posts. So that's that yeah, auction house. Um, okay, okay. Since so we're ruling this town out, right? One, Unless you want to be, things on you, you want to live, you live advantage. in a big boat. But if you're into buying a lot of stuff from the auction house, it is probably going to be right. the most overpriced city to do that in. All right, so up next is going to be Monarch's Bluff, which is going to feature hmm. similar town benefits to First Light in the way of Bessie the Cow um, that you can gather milk from. You're also, again, going to get two wells for water and a jar of honey. Now, the faction um, supply cart is actually going to be an iron supply cart. So, again, just remember, guys, um, your faction needs to own the territory for you guys yep. to collect this, and you can collect it once a day. Okay. All right. So, again, just like first line, I'm going to throw up the housing buying guide here, and we can see that we actually have two options for a cheaper house that will give us... Who's going to buy people. Who's going to buy a house in this game? You get no lifers that will do it purchase and then but, it's actually going to be in the oh, northwest dude. corner and the southeast you know? corner so that northwest corner though is should be noted I it just, is right next to the town board so yeah it is actually a pretty decent spot for a house now it's worth mentioning that this city probably me what a heck i'm cold out area for harvesting <laughs> now that is you housing for fast traveling 30 um, Wait, what if I want to, don't want to fast travel? Herbs and, what if I just uh, want to go nice and slow? Here, and slow. Crazy amount of you know, magical the slower you go, the more you know. From to really help your craft that's what I'm saying. Further on. So that's if you go slower, like the more you know. Gauntlet, life staff, fire staff, things like that. Um, also, you need these modes okay. to actually cut gems as well. What? So that's another thing that you can kind of future-proof yourself in this area. So I just want, thought this, this was worth mentioning, uh, especially about Monarch's Bluff, because I do think it's a great harvesting starting area. Okay. So Monarch's Bluff does actually share a similarity with uh, First Light in the way that you can actually do some saltwater fishing because it is right next to a beach. So I'm going to go true. ahead and throw up the fish list that you can find off the coast here. Um, and you can kind of see all the different fish that you can be trying to catch while you're right next to the city. So it is not that far away. Um, and then also note that you can find a lot of flint along these beaches. So okay. it can be really beneficial. Um, they're not hidden under grass or anything like that. So it's a little bit easier to find and collect flint. Now, the last of the similarities to First Light, and unfortunately it's going to be a con for Monarch's Bluff, is going to be its inability to have a good trading post market. Now, this is another town that's probably going to not be as populated as Windsward or Everfall, so your Give items are honey. probably not going to sell just as quickly, but honestly, like in First Light, you're probably going to be able to sell these items for a lot more. So during the last beta, I was actually selling iron tools in Monarch's Bluff for over 300 gold per. Bruh. And places like Everfall, since there's so much iron right next to it, um, they were selling for like less than 100 gold each. So okay. just kind of okay. use the areas right. to your advantage. And like I said um, in my previous video, I'm so fucking pumped for this fucking game. Town, go to another to sell in my head so i'm so pumped for this game but like the more that now, the more that i sort of look into it i'm like i don't want to get too pumped because i how many times have you been really pumped for a game city. see this Everything is a good is layout super far apart, and it's but it's a good layout though because you're not <laughs> out of any of the four starting cities and it can be kind of aggravating now I wouldn't is say that, that this is the sole one? reason that you shouldn't do it but oh yeah because you can only go through here that way yeah 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 okay informed about it and that's kind of it for my cons okay. on this city. So up next, mushroom tacos today. Now, Everfall was the first starting city that I ever got to spread play out. on in this I game. You. And I think there is always something very special about your first starting city in like a big MMO like this. And it's always going to stick with you when you play the game. It's just one of those towns it's that's always going to feel right and comfortable to play in um, compared to some of the other starting areas. All right. So to go over a few of the amenities. See, look, the look at the syndicate here, man. Syndicate here, thick, well, man. A honey jar. 
and then a faction supply hide cart. Um, so you don't get a cow in this town, and that is something to be very well Doesn't aware matter. of. Doesn't and matter. You're only getting one well instead of two Doesn't like matter. the other towns. But one of the greatest features about this town is its location on the map. It is so centrally yep. located. Yep. Um, it makes it perfect though, for when you're ready to move on to those higher level territories. Though the big, the, though the big thing here is that like you possibly could just have a uh, have a map that uh, you could have you could have a an area that is. I mean, if you're in these further off parts, everyone's gonna raid you towards the middle, right? Everyone's gonna raid you like if they come in. So if you're off, if you're in the middle, not such a good idea all the time. But if you're like off away from everyone. Sure, travel time's a bitch, but it's gonna take a whole lot more effort for people to come to come and get you. I, don't really have I feel. To run too I feel. Far to go I feel. To. And another thing to note about this territory is going to be that the fact that you can actually level a little bit higher than the other mm. three. So the other three, um, they typically tell Some you. Some of the map NPCs are higher. Move on oh shit! So we gotta start at the bottom. Whereas Everfall, Street Corn's my favorite. Probably level 100%. up to about twenty-seven oh, to corn, thirty please. pretty comfortably. Now I would probably recommend you go off to a different territory because you're probably going to be pretty bored being stuck in just one territory. For a bunch of levels like that mm -hmm. but you do have the opportunity where you don't really need to move on just yet okay so let's talk about the trading post in this city and this is probably going to be the go-to on the map are you trading corn the long areas. way since it is so centrally located it makes it like that the way prime area to kind of be the main basically mid to bottom of low levels gonna okay we're gonna go through there kind of try to sell okay right other stuff on the trading post here but we need but to like figure said, out what 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 uh monarchs bluff, you what faction we're Gonna be man. best prices here so just kind of faction's gonna determine everything man it's going to be probably the most act once we figure out our faction we'll Dude, be okay um you are gonna have probably more people to compete with on this uh -huh. now moving on whereas monarch's bluff was probably the best harvesting starting area i for one believe everfall is probably the best area to start iron ore mining now a lot okay. of people are going to probably get this confused with monarch's bluff because monarch's bluff does have a lot of great oh, mining right. areas in it but i feel like um even from my previous video of showing you guys the perfect iron ore run out of everfall you can see how it skirts the line basically with monarch's bluff and i feel like it's a lot closer to everfall than it is to the right. monarch's bluff main right. city so that is why i feel like everfall is the place to go to mine ore rather than monarch's bluff so starting off with our cons list in this area and the first thing i already mentioned is they're gonna have to get you to work out the gold in the long game bar. as you only earn money from um, quests and the market you can't sell anything from npcs no house for 2500 gold now the cheapest house that you can get with the discount is going to be 5000 gold so it can make it a little bit tougher uh getting that first initial starting house so those are the two major cons that I have with this city. So let's go up and up next. Oh, that guy's outfit, man. So let's check hundred percent. Looks like a freaking so Witcher Windsor, from. This is easily um, the most popular city, and a demon everybody hunter from... wants to use it as their starting location. So okay. let's kind of get a little bit better understanding of why that might be. So market's gonna get saturated. Windsor is going to have Dottie the cow, I guess that's the lowest the price things. Around. Absolutely makes it easier. Uh, you're going to get the two wells. You're also going to get a honey jar and then a faction fiber supply. Okay, card. okay. And then moving right along, uh, we do get a 2,500 gold house, which is right near the town Ooh. board, which is awesome so that you can just basically okay. teleport to your house and turn in those quests even that much faster. And one other thing worries, I want to talk about is the layout of this city. So this Yo, Nadiosu, what up, man? Great layouts. Um, the distance between all the crafting stations and the town turn-in boards and things like that, I feel like are the perfect distance, unlike in First Light and Mother's Yeah, Club. okay. All right. Now just You're not running too far for everything? Winsworth Speaking of quality food, oh my god, my friggin' location for my stomach, man. My stomach's doing flips right now. And getting that tier one <sighs> staff so that you can do things like the Amran excavation uh, dungeon and also um, yeah so Nash what up dude some, like low level corrupted portals as well go get food after um, this I'll get food get some of those supply you know something delivered there. that is a perfect opportunity as well now continuing on with the quest oh, well. thing and also another pro is going to be there is a lake just outside the gates of the city now that lake actually has a early on hotspot fishing spot Ooh, we could start here give you a free we could start here huh early on. all you have to do is actually go hey, now, up, man. so no worries about nah, going up, man. hemp 
Um, so Maybe both of them. Oh my god, dude. Hole. And another thing with fishing is if you, you don't like want to go out to the lake, there's actually a stream that runs through the middle of the town, and you can fish through that. So you can fish basically Bruh. without ever having to leave into the wilderness, which I guess can be a bonus if you want it to be, um, but you are missing out on those hot spots and things like that. Now for my last pro on this town is going to be that you can go oh, right outside and find an abundant amount of fronded petal caps and also hemp. Now hemp's going to be perfect if you want to just get your harvesting level up. Um, also perfect if you want to start crafting. Can you, can you partake in this? that and making light armor so that's going to be perfect i'm streaming for five years man i'm streaming for five and years it's bro. also good to note that these <laughs> not on youtube on twitch do i did not require any level to harvest so you okay. can actually just start harvesting right after you get a sickle now after all these list of pros you can start to really begin to understand why a lot of people are going to try to be picking up windsward as their main city over okay. any other city but this city does come with a couple of cons that i have in mind now the first one is going to be the trading post again this is probably going to be a very active trading post and i don't think it's going to be as active as ever twitch, yeah bro it's like three um, years man since i streamed on twitch you have a very big scene um i think there might even be more people initially here and then it'll probably transition to everfall eventually yep yeah. Um, so so Wind's Ward is the place we're looking for, Gaddy, huh? To buy things in the auction house, you might okay. be able to find I'm down. Fairly cheap, pretty early on. Um, but if you're someone who's trying to make money, this is going to be very difficult because you're going to have a great deal of people um, that you're going to have to compete with, unfortunately. Yep. And my second con with this city is going to be the lack of iron ore um, that's kind of near the major city. Um, there's spots here and there, and there's also a pretty good chunk just south of the city. But with the abundant amount of players that are going to be here, I feel like getting iron ore anytime soon after the this game, game of the day. Yeah, is yeah. going to be very difficult yeah, we move up. in that area. So we won our first house in Windswood. Uh, okay. thing that I would okay. really consider if you're... The cool end game finding yes Winsward, yes taco or if you're just That's so dedicated game. just note that finding that iron ore may be a lot more okay. difficult and you may have mm. to worry about trying to get that iron ore at certain times yes. of the day rather than others when everybody else is playing okay um so I'm it in. might be like a nighttime thing when you're having to do those farm runs now that's a big portion of all my pros and cons about these towns, but there's it looks a like last Napoleon. little comparison that I kind of want to talk about, um, and that's going to be the nearby crate locations to these major cities. Now I didn't okay. want to go too far okay. outside the city, um, and I also wanted to make sure that the enemies were under level 15 because with these uh, supply crates, caches, and stockpiles, you can get them once an hour, and they're going to have items that you're going to need to craft base level items. Um, into higher tier level items so they're going to basically be required so it's another thing to and, consider especially in your and the good thing that i like about this is that like you literally one of my favorite things in like games like rust is like remember we played look at that napoleon looking hat napoleon looking motherfucker i love it the the good thing one of the fun things i loved about rust was just like spending hours just like farming <laughs> like it, it's so cathartic your starting area it's so cathartic you just chug on some music you just sit you know, chat with the boys, everyone's doing their thing, and then you, you're doing it, man. You're fucking doing it. I think that's fucking awesome, man. I love that shit. Yeah, and how close you're going to be to some of these crates. All right, so here we are on the New World map, and what we're taking a look at is all these different chests that are right near First Light. Now, right. There is going to be 23 supply crates that Holy are nearby shit. and one provisioning stockpile. So we can see a lot of the chests are up here, but again, note the monster level, which is 9 to 10 up yep. here. Yep. Uh, we have a group down here, which is going to be between 6 and 8. Um, and then we also have two down here, which is going to be around the level six beasts. Now, I didn't count this bridge just because this is over my fifteen level fifteen uh, limit that I set. In oh, jeez. Okay. All right. So up next is going to be Monarch's Bluff, where we're going to have three provision crates, one provision stockpile. 10 supply crates, one alchemy stockpile, and that's going to be it in the immediate um, vicinity. Yeah, and then and that's, that's just going to be... Enemy level here is only going to be level 6. That's pretty low. Awesome. So that I'm going to farm lumber and herbs, make health potions to sell in the market. Enemies. Bro, I and it's also I'll be a lumberjack with you, bro. You literally 100% I'll be a fucking lumberjack with you, bro. Yep. For the people who want a PvP, I don't want fucking PvP. I want to see what the PvP stuff is like in this game.
I don't mind. Uh, I, I love the fact in this game that you don't have to, you don't have to go out and do all the crazy shit. You can just run out and farm, dude. How fucking sick is that? Pretty much run outside over here, and you're pretty much right in that town. They they fully understand that people like just, if people want to do cathartic shit. Cool that's down, fine, bro. So that gives you the perfect opportunity. And you can you level up in budgets by doing herbing and stuff, and like you know collection crafting stuff in wow but like here i feel like you get a little bit more for your time now it should be noted that up here into the mountain is level seven with a whole heaping load of chests up here but i did not count those in this um just be let me count them for you bro one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen thirteen 13 at the top bit and one, two, three at the bottom. Because bit. getting up that mountain can kind of be a pain. Um, you can either kind of walk up it over here, um, otherwise, you have to follow the path all the way around. And it can be a. You guys, you gotta watch out, man. Marky's gonna come for you, bro. You know, you know when you have the Terminator? You know the T1000? Not the Terminator one, the liquid metal guy? That's Marky. Unrelenting. Will consistently just come to, to. He'll give it away for free, bro. Just a pretty good fucking point. <laughs> Bit of a time sink, I think. Um, and that's the whole reason we don't count those chests in this initial count. All right, so up... Je Jez, is, Jez goes uh, uh, <laughs> Super Saiyan, dude. He does. Next is going to be Everfall with the least amount of chests possible. and that's Oh my god, these guys are like... Eight supply chests <laughs> and one provisioning crate. But... One thing to note here is once you hit level 15, that does open up some, but it being right on the edge of where I said that the cutoff limit was, yep. I did not feel comfortable enough to count them. Okay. Um, but it's just good to note that that is there, especially if you do like the Everfall Town, um, you have that option once you can kind of battle those kind of level enemies. Yep. All right. And lastly, we have Windsward coming in super strong. What a surprise. This us boys. 32 supply this crates. This is fucking home. Provisioning crates. And they're all kind of in a like half circle around the city as we can kind of see. Um, and they all That's kind of perfect. Look at that. Level. Beautiful. So you have beautiful. Six to seven. Um, and see us hanging out in there. Nine to ten. Run around. Also some down in oh, here. Oh, dude. Have like level six chests nice. right here. Um, but honestly, it probably gives you the most amount of chests to go and collect. So you could just basically, once you're like higher level, just run through these towns, collecting all these supply crates and stuff like that. Sounds good. And then hitting Sounds the town. Good. So it's just good to know, but this one definitely has the most. And especially if you start to zoom out, you can see all the different crates down oh, here shit. as well. Um, hitting that level 15 uh, buffer that I, I had talked about and then going even higher after that. I'm down. I'm down. So that's <laughs> it about the supply crates. Okay. Now there is a couple takeaways that I wanted to discuss before ending off this video. Mm -hmm. And the first is that please note that all this research uh, for items nearby, I'm going by immediate vicinity to major cities. Um, I'm it, makes, it makes way, way more sense to do it that way. Then, then just go, oh, this is what you potentially could have because you you need some sort of metric. To, to make life easier. I mean, there might be stuff like further off, but like, yeah, it's, this is the better way to do it. I'm not looking at the entire territory as a whole, unfortunately. I mm -hmm. was looking at, you know, fast ways to gather materials. Um, how close in proximity is it to the, the city itself? Because Oof. I know a lot of you guys don't want to be running around um, all across the territory because no a way. lot of people do complain that you do have to exactly. do a lot of running in this game. And you will. And honestly, I find it, great fun to just go explore and gather all this stuff as i'm exploring but yep. some of you might not be that way and i completely so kind of a bit of an issue so with leveling farming that was got video, too high kind of level and islands are too good for me to equip how i would rank all four of these <laughs> starting areas and my rationale behind but too that. low for you to so equip first i'm going to talk about first light which honestly in my opinion is probably the worst starting location for a couple reasons and the first is going to be the distance to get anywhere and honestly this is the only town to me that feels like a running simulator just because I think it starts out like right away. You're just constantly running and trying to get to these areas that seem so far away. Okay. And I really wish they would have fixed this. And that's probably going to be my biggest gripe with this territory and starting area. Um, but my next would be the lack of materials that are nearby. Now, there are a decent amount of supply crates. But honestly, things like iron or higher level harvesting, it just seems to lack a little bit and it's not worth it to me. 
Now, Everfall is up next in third place. Now, I will always have a fondness for this city since it was my first city to go okay. to. But your mother was so I could craft higher tier items, but I couldn't use them because my character level. Oh shit! Uh, making items right. for that town board and stuff, I feel like milk right. is just kind of a necessity. Um, but there also is no cheap house purchases. So Fuck. if you don't make that like ton of gold early on, this can be really can kind of a bummer. That was at a high level. The reason why but the I items were too third, good for you to equip. A little bit more so you could craft higher tier items, but he couldn't now, use them because your character level. Is going to be so you, might you be could craft yourself, shit, but you you couldn't level. Yeah, okay, the okay, okay. To okay. Go to. It has so force you to do main story. And honestly, to me. It's just going to be the amount, sheer amount of people that are going to... Well, that's basically, the, that's basically how I play every single Assassin's Creed game, man. Fuck the main story off and just go do, like, exploration. And a whole bunch of the side quest stuff. So then when you come to the main storyline, you literally just dance backwards through it. That's, that, that, that's, that's how I would do it. Exactly how I would do it going to be here that are going to kind of ruin it for me yep um and the lack of iron ore initially because i'm going to be kind of going straight for iron uh tools and then for steel tools and i feel like that everfall monarchs bluff area is going to be the ideal um for me and you're also not going to have as many magic plants as you are in uh, monarchs bluff so that leaves me to my first pick which is Monarch's Bluff, and that is because there is a lot of money made. Like OG here, Fable with the arena glitch. He... Very you know it. So you know it. A lot of levels in a short amount of time. Shit, I'm talking about Fable in forever, dude. I think this very, is the game that quickly. Fable wanted to be. And then my thinking behind this all is that it is so close to Everfall that it's a pretty easy walk over there. So if I need to sell items, you know, that I can't sell in the Monarch's Bluff, or I need to purchase something that's a little bit uh, cheaper. I can just go over to Everfall, and since they're going to pretty much have a booming auction house economy over there, it's going to be easy to go buy stuff or sell stuff if there's items that I just want to get rid of. Fable 4, oh my gosh, items, yes. You know, yes. Be a Fable 4, Fable 4. So yes. I am curious to know where you guys would like to end up for your starting locations and why. And also, if you're going to try to keep... Bruh, I'm going to go to wherever my friends areas, are. I don't give a fuck if it's shit. I'm just going to go there instead. and then so just tough it out. That that's going to be the experience. Below, and I would love to read those. Now, that's all I have for today's video. Hopefully, you guys learned some right. pros and cons about all these starting locations and correct really make better informed decisions about which starting city is right for you. Okay. Now, if you like this video and want to be notified when a new video goes live, Bruh. think about hitting that subscribe I'm going to hit the subscribe button on this guy's guys. This guy makes some good content, and man. I will see you guys in the next video. You will fucking see me in the next video, motherfucker. I'll be there watching that shit 100%. All day, every day. I'll be a fucking... I'll be all, I'll be up, all up on that shit, man. Holy shit. It's not really going to matter. No, in the end, it's not really going to matter because we're basically just going to be... um. Windsward is the key. Okay. So Windsward crew, we're going in on that. Windsward crew. That's what we're choosing. That's exactly where we're going. But we need to figure out what uh what uh faction we're gonna be, man. What faction we're gonna be, boys? What are we gonna be? What are we gonna be? What are we gonna do, man? That is gonna be the big one. That is hundred percent gonna be the big one. Holy shit. That was a good video, bro. That was a good video. It gave me definitely, definitely good idea of what we were doing. There's a hundred tips here, bro. A hundred tips? Yes, over. Oh, bruh. Bruh. We're going to watch that one after. Um, the, other, the, uh, the issue is whether or not your faction owns other towns. Because if they do, you can transport your storage from other towns. Well, what faction are we going to do, man? A faction, boys. Do you have to just wait and see? Because you don't want to jump on and be like, you know, you don't want to be in, in, in the one that you end up getting geefed out on. Two to later, I'll let you guys decide the faction since I picked the server. I'm going to say Syndicate, man. Like straight up, Syndicate would be the would be it for me, man. But like, let's have a look here, bro. Syndicate. Oh no, we're going, um. You want factions. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 
Here we go, 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 here we go. So, Master Battle, Factions. Factions are powerful organizations locked in the struggle until Eternium. After reaching a particular milestone during the early parts of your adventure, you must choose a side in this conflict. As your adventure, as your adventure you'll be introduced to these three factions, the Marauders, the Syndicate, and the Covenant. But each faction has a set of principles and unique motivation for wanting control of Eternium. The Marauders is a Maruthus military force and establish a free nation where anyone with strength to do so can prosper and profit. That's not bad. That's not bad. Right? The Syndicate is a secretive organization with boundless guile and intellect in search of forbidden knowledge to usher in a new age of enlightenment. Hmm? And the Covenant is a fanatical order that has charged itself with cleansing the lands of heretics and defilers so that its true holy nature can flourish and justice can be restored. I reckon we go the fucking plague doctors, bro. <laughs> you on Fire Nation, bro. <laughs> You're going Fire Nation, dude. Big purple dogs, mate. Big purple dogs. That's the, uh, purple dogs are the, uh, freaking Wasman Jigger, aren't they? Where are we? I'm on the, uh, I'm, on, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in one of their weird blog posts. Uh, FAQ, uh, about a game, about, uh, fuck the world, of the past. Here. Syndicate. Big purple dogs. Covenant sounds up your guys' alley. <laughs> Fucking bet. Yeah, up your guys' alley. Hello, Shayla. <laughs> oh my god. You're right, Jez. We should probably pick the one who unlocks the first town, just to say. But like, you know, Syndicate sounds like a good, a good way to go. Let's get the fucking iron shit, man. You know, that's the best way to do it. All right. Well, we'll look at that stuff. That'll be the thing. That'll be the thing we end up looking at. 